After trying a number of chemical products to clean these gunked up intake valves with minimal success, I'm finally turning to walnut blasting as part of a major 100,000 mile tune up that I'm doing on this 2017 Honda Accord with a GDI engine. Now tools for walnut blasting can be expensive, but I'll be showing a more affordable setup that you can use to get the job done. And even if you don't want to go the option of walnut blasting, I'll also be demonstrating a really cheap method that achieves decent results. I'll be sharing a number of valuable lessons along the way, especially if you're considering cleaning your intake valves by yourself for the first time. Now let's get this. Now the 2013 to 2017 Honda Accord has its intake manifold facing the firewall and that's really very annoying because it tends to require a lot more effort for cleaning. I have 96,000 miles on the odometer and thanks to everyone who filled out the poll, most of you wanted me to show a streamlined version of going straight to intake valve cleaning but we'll also make a dedicated video showing the more detailed process including intake manifold removal and so on. And so for today it's the streamlined video and I'm going straight to intake valve cleaning. The intake manifold is already off and so let's get our first look at the intake valves. I'm using the Teslong TD500 dual lens articulating bore scope which I got recently and I've been impressed with. And so starting from cylinder one, here's what the first intake valve looks like. And here's the second one. Most of the buildup is on the stem for the intake valve. And then we move over to cylinder two. Here you can see that the valve is open. For this four cylinder engine, at any one time, one valve is going to be open and that's cylinder two here. And then over to cylinder three and it's the same story of buildup, mainly on the valve stem. The walls of the intake port also have this oily carbon grime all over. And finally to cylinder four where it's the same story Story. In all, I'll say that these valves aren't too bad for a car at 96,000 miles. I've seen worse. Very important before we get into cleaning, let's talk tools. First is this cheap gravity fed media blaster, which I'm going to be modifying in a minute to improve the flow. I'm using this 18 to 40 grit walnut shells for blasting. Also very important is for you to get an oil water separator. If you don't get this, the walnut media is going to be clogging up the blasting nozzle. Now the nozzle that the media blaster comes with is pretty short so I had to also get this longer nozzle and in addition to that I also had to get two 10 millimeter copper tubes as well as this pipe bender tool which I used to bend it into shape. I made two separate long curved nozzles with one having this extra curve at the tip just for better exposure at the valve stems. You also need this pipe expander tool to enable the long nozzle going into the curved copper tubes. You're also going to be needing an air compressor so mine has about 4 CFM and the tank is 25 liters or 6 gallons. Note that the higher the CFM, the better the flow rate of the air and the better the blaster is going to perform. This blaster is advertised to work with 7 CFM but we'll see how far we go with 4. The thing is that the higher the CFM, the larger the tank size for the air compressor and I just don't have that much space. Just in case walnut blasting didn't work, I also went ahead to get these nylon bristol brushes and because of the limited space in the firewall area, I also got this flex shaft extension with a chop. For these rear facing intake manifolds, if you can, I advise you get a bore scope just to help guide your cleaning efforts. I've also used a cheaper depth tech bore scope and there are some that plug directly to your phone that are less than $30. And finally, I'm using my vacuum cleaner as a shop vac. I added this tubing with some duct tape just to improve my versatility with vacuuming. If you don't modify the blaster, you're basically not going to have much flow from the gun and that's because this blaster is rated for 46 to 100 grit media. Meanwhile, the walnut media I have is 18 to 40 grit. Note that the lower the grit size, the larger the diameter of the granules. And so to modify the blaster, let's remove the nozzle and then use this allen wrench to remove the two screws that are holding the hopper in place. Do take note of this o-ring that makes for a better seal between the hopper and the lower half of the blaster. To improve the flow rate, you're going to use a 6 millimeter bit and then have the blaster in the open position and go ahead to increase the size of this hole. Take care not to go too deep so that you don't drill through the air channel beneath. 
and here's a view of that air channel. Secondly, use the same 6mm bit to widen the outlet hole for the hopper and then put back the o-ring and reassemble the blasting gun in reverse order. I've already used the pipe bender tool to get the 10mm copper tubes into the shapes that I want. Again, you probably won't need this if your intake manifold is to the front of the engine. Links to these tools are going to be down below in case you want to check them out. By personal preference, I'm going to rotate the crankshaft just so that the valves open are cylinder one that way i know that the open valve is at this end of the engine and just in case you don't have a walnut blaster let me demonstrate cleaning the intake valves on cylinder four using the nylon brush method i started by filling the intake pot with this water-based engine degreaser and after some dwell time i then attacked it with the nylon brush to do some agitation although i'm using this flexible drill extension i later found out that my drill could actually fit in this fire wall area. After all that, I used a combination of a turkey baster and a manual pump to extract all the dirty fluid and here's what that looks like. And after this first round of cleaning, here's what the intake valves look like. It's definitely done a lot of cleaning, especially on the intake ports, but I need something stronger and so I bring in cab cleaner, which did a much better job. And here's some point of view action as I agitate around the valves with cab cleaner. I do a couple rounds of this and and then blow out with compressed air and here's what the intake valves look like by just using these nylon brushes and chemicals you can see that it's a massive improvement there's still a few carbon left here and there but since we're not making microprocessors this is actually fine and then i move on to cylinder 3 for walnut blasting since i haven't seen any honda adapter for intake valve cleaning i went ahead to tape off all the intake ports and then made holes for the vacuum hose as well as the blasting nozzle i also made a hole for the boss scope just so i'm able to see what i'm cleaning and to also give you guys a better point of view and these are what the valves look like i'm starting with this one now you're better off blasting continuously as against making short bursts this was something i learned and you can aim to blast for around 30 to 45 seconds when you're done blasting you should shut off the supply for the walnut shells because if you don't your vacuum is just going to continue sucking walnut shells from the blasting gun after this first round of blasting you can see that the carbon on the valve stem on this side is now gone while you still have some on this other side and so i go back to blasting and after all that blasting here's what the intake valves look like with just walnut blasting since i still wanted to clean some of the carbon at the back side of the stems i transitioned to spraying some cab cleaner into the intake pot and then also went ahead to use the nylon brush i extract all the bad stuff added a bit of degreaser for another round of cleaning and after blowing out with compressed air here's how the intake valves look I went ahead to do this same process for intake valves on cylinders 3 and 4. One thing I learned here is that even with walnut blasting, you might still need some agitation just because some of the carbon is really going to be held up so good on the intake valves. Also, my 25 litre air compressor with a CFM of about 4 is probably underpowered for this gun. But either way, I was still able to achieve decent results with just walnut blasting. I think the bigger challenge here was just this rare face intake manifold your lower back is just going to burn as you lean over the engine for extended periods here are the final results starting from cylinder one this cylinder was my last to clean and honestly i didn't put in as much effort as my back was already killing me you can see there's some carbon left on the back of the intake valve but not too bad in all here's cylinder two much better results and cleaner and the difference is definitely night and day and we move over to cylinder that three which is also looking much cleaner this effort really took a lot to make and so i appreciate if you could like and subscribe to the channel and finally cylinder four which i only cleaned with chemicals and the nylon brush despite your best efforts you're going to have walnut shells all over the engine bay so i'm taking some time to vacuum things up be sure to watch out for the second more detailed part of this video where i show the intake manifold removal and a lot of other exciting stuff hope this has been helpful be sure to subscribe if it has and i'll catch you on the next one